Is your anonymous data really that anonymous? Leslie Picker is back at HQ to tell us. Leslie. John, you've likely checked that box under terms of service, you know, the one allowing companies to sell or share your data. And chances are you agreed to this because they told you that your data would be anonymized. Well, a new study found that even if personal attributes like your name and email address are stripped from your data set, it could still be possible for someone to re-identify you. In fact, a team of European researchers found that 99.98% of Americans could be correctly re identified in any data set using just 15 demographic attributes like age, gender, and marital status. The researchers published a demonstration tool that shows how likely you are to be traced just by providing your zip code, gender, and birthday. We tried this out on some prominent CEOs. Jeff Bezos' uniqueness is about average at 82 percent. Warren Buffett has a near perfect chance of being identified at 97 percent. And Mark Zuckerberg is below average with just a 51 percent uniqueness when it comes to those three demographic traits. Now, the researchers say their findings contradict the reassurances we've heard from companies and governments for years. This idea that de-identification is enough to protect the privacy of people's data. In fact, the standard of anonymization for privacy laws like Europe's GDPR is simply defined as data rendered anonymous in such a way that the data subject is no longer uh, identifiable. The question from this research, though, is whether these laws need to be tightened in order to ensure that data is truly anonymized. Carl. Uh, th that's fascinating, Leslie. I mean, that Buffett number of 97, is this a matter of your age, meaning the footprint that you've left? Because Buffett's mm -hmm. not socially uh, media, media active, but he's certainly been around a while. It's his age and also where the population density is. One would imagine that Omaha, for example, has less population density in his specific zip code than, say, Seattle or San Francisco suburbs like where Mark Zuckerberg lives. So I think it's a combination of all those things. I tried it out on myself, and I only have a 41% uniqueness, so well below average. But I live in Manhattan where there's a greater population density than you might have um, in some of the other parts of the United States. Interesting. Uh, I did give Leslie my information. Leslie, I'm not sure if you ran it, but I'm not even sure I want to know at this point. <laughs> I, I didn't. Plus I did Canadian, so I wonder if that changes anything. I've only existed here in the U.S. for less amount of time than these two guys. <laughs> well, I think being a San Francisco native might, or native now at least, uh, might skew the, the data to be a little bit more, um, you know, closer to where I'm at, lower than uh, the ease in which someone might be able to, to re-identify a Warren Buffett, say. Um, I do think that has something to do with it, as well as the age. There aren't that many people who have the same birth date as Warren Buffett um, that, are, that are still living today. Right.